Another day, another Brexit deadline missed. But London and Brussels say they'll continue negotiations, a sign of both parties' commitment to securing a deal before Britain exits the EU at the end of this month. At the same time, though, they are sending out different messages. The UK is warning they're still very far apart on key issues. And European negotiators say progress has been made. Hermani G has the story. Going the extra mile. Both UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen are pushing on, telling their teams to keep talking to agree a trade deal as another deadline came and went. EU Chief Negotiator Michel Barnier is set to brief the 27 member ambassadors in Brussels today on what progress, if any, has been made. But time is running out. The UK is set to leave EU rules at the end of the month. The main sticking points don't seem to have changed. Fishing rights, a level playing field and governance. What we want is a good deal that respects these principles of economic fair play and principles of governance. What do principles of governance mean? In case of litigation, we must be certain that we can resolve this litigation. This is also one of those points that is difficult, that is the subject of discussion. The UK and EU have been carrying out negotiations for a post-Brexit trade deal since March. Without one, tariffs or charges on goods being bought and sold between the two sides could be introduced. And in turn, prices on certain products may go up. Whilst it was good that the talks uh, didn't come to an end uh, with uh, Sunday's announcement, it, they didn't show any progress. And I think that's the real problem that we've seen all through the past few weeks is that it's the same issues same problems and no clear way through. The uncertainty is trying the patience of many, including in Sunderland, home to the Nissan car plant. Uh, yes, uh, no deal, yeah, whatever, let's get out of it and get our own fishing rights back. Nissan may be pulling out if, if they have to pay tariffs on the cars going in, into Europe. Um, I mean, the country did vote democratically to leave, so I do feel we should leave, but we need to leave with a deal. So the talking goes on, but for how long? Both sides say this is crunch week, but that's been said before. Hermione G, Euronews. Let's go to Brussels to find out more. Speak to our correspondent, Shona Murray. Shona, very good morning to you. So we're getting different messaging from both sides. This has happened many a time before. London really seems to be dampening down expectations, and there's a little bit more of a hopeful tone coming out of the EU. Why is there that discrepancy, and which side should we believe? Well, I think the difference is slightly marginal. I think it's much more of a tone because if you look yesterday, that statement from Ursula von der Leyen and Boris Johnson, they both said that they had a constructive phone call. And we both know from both sides that the outstanding issues still remain that some progress has been made, albeit just very small amounts of progress. It's pretty clear that we know from Boris Johnson's point of view that he has to prove that he has taken the fight to the EU, that he's fought to the bitter end to get as much uh, concessions as possible. I mean, you look the way he's briefed his government, have briefed the press, the fact that they're saying there's going to be gunboats protecting British fish, was, which is pretty uh, disproportionate, um, but also puts up that sort of uh, fighting battle against the European Union and I think that's probably part of it. Boris Johnson needs to prove, have a lot more to prove here that he's gotten as much as he possibly can. And we do know that the progress has been extremely slow but there's enough there for both sides to continue talking. I think that's the main important point. So many deadlines have come and gone. The one that is immovable is December the 31st. So that's just two and a half weeks away now. Even if they do manage to come to some kind of trade agreement today, is there enough time to get that deal ratified before the 31st of December? Oh, today, I don't think there will be a deal today, but I know what you mean. I mean, this week even. Well, the European Parliament is penciled in to debate it on the 28th of December, which means it could be in place then for the 1st of January. But I think that at the same time, and that's probably what we're looking at, it would be very difficult for people to get uh, prepared for that. But that's where we're, that's where we're here. Um, so I think that there will be enough time. And at the end of the day, I think you know both sides, particularly the EU, have said that they won't let process 
get in the way of substance that you know even if they keep on having to talk to the 31st of January then you would have perhaps in the future relationship treaty uh, written in some sort of grace period or some sort of extension to allow businesses to get ready if it took it up till the end of December to keep talking but I don't think they're going to do that I think really it still requires a political intervention and I know on the key areas particularly on the level playing field and um, when it comes to um, maintaining standards they are making some progress on that but I do also I could also say that uh, fisheries is still quite outstanding as an issue they haven't made any progress on that at all but I suppose the key issue the key point is that they feel that there's enough progress being made or at least that the situation is constructive enough to keep on talking Rosie Shona thank you very much our correspondent there in Brussels well, Professor Amelia Hatfield is head of the Department of Politics and director of the Centre for Britain and Europe at the University of Surrey in the UK. And she joins us now from Guildford. Thank you very much for your time. Look, Boris Johnson has said, whatever happens, the UK will do very, very well. Do you agree with him? Oh, I'm not sure about that, Rosie. I, I think uh, we've already seen in the last couple of months and possibly years uh, since the referendum, the economy has effectively gone into uh, something like suspended animation, if I can put it this way. Uh, and now with a very real impact, I think that COVID is beginning to have, um, it's going to be a series of um, small wins um, to mitigate what I think will be the, a very real impact in the short term possibly in the medium and long term. And I am talking here somewhere between possibly, you know, 10 and 12 years as both sides adjust to the new structure. Um, there'll be an understanding of what's possible and wins can arise from that. Um, when you talk about impact, I think we should what be, do you mean in practical terms? Well, certainly, I think if we're talking about a no deal Brexit at this point, and it's not off the cards. Um, I think your correspondent was right that the, the tone to some degree has shifted. Um, we are also obviously looking um, at the um, introduction of customs um, at either end um, of, of Britain. Um, and this is going to be particularly difficult in bottleneck ports uh, like, uh, like Dover and Calais, obviously, on, on the French side. Because of the sheer concentration of heavy goods vehicles, you get upwards of 7,000 um, vehicles uh, going through these ports um, every single day, uh, which is incredibly swift. Uh, but if they now have to um, implement customs as a result of coming out of the customs union, which they have to, even if they do get a good deal, that's going to take uh, an awful lot of time. But if you add to that uh, no deal Brexit, that additional layer of uncertainty um, and lack of clarity, um, it's going to further complicate things uh, initially um, because we won't really have a clear sense of rules and regulations. So not only will it slow down the supply chain with regards to goods, um, it's going to very much complicate how we manage our financial services and services more generally. So virtually every aspect aspect uh, of, of the economy, um, every aspect of the market is going to be complicated, as well as mobility of, of people and students. Do you think we've actually moved any closer to getting a deal? Because it seems the sticking points have been pretty immovable for the last few months now. Yes, I, I want to believe this. I, I really do. Um, it's true that, that fisheries, to some extent, does seem intractable, ex except we have seen um, an extension with regards to um, uh, how, how to make changes there, um, e even if a particular deal isn't, isn't met, an implementation period of between five and seven years at least has been suggested. So that's a good start. Um, governance still tricky, but I think the idea is that will probably left, be left to the very end. Once you've nailed out the nitty gritty with regards to the level playing field, um, how you um, effectively uh, agree something like a dispute settlement resolution or an arbitral uh, tribunal to manage it on either side um, will, will probably fall into place. I'm not going to say it's easy, uh, but I think it probably is doable. And I, I think the sense, yeah. We'll leave it there for time. Thank you very much, Professor Amelia Hadfield, Head of the Department of Politics and Director of the Centre of Britain and Europe at the University of Surrey, speaking to us there in the UK.